Welcome to Corner Cafe. I am your host, Rachel Maines, and Jamie Daniel has the night off. He's actually doing um, vacation Bible school and helping the kids out with basketball. So yay, Jamie, good for you. We, we love that he's very active in the community. Um, but we have some exciting things um, to talk about with the Corner Cafe. First of which, the Corner Cafe is now moving under Influencers TV. You could check out Influencers TV at InfluencersTV.com. So Influencers TV is courses, and we're going to be teaching people like um, how to have your own radio show and then bringing other content creators, many of which whom we've interviewed on the show who are artists um, and entrepreneurs within the community t- to teach other things as well. So stay tuned and go to InfluencersTV.com, and you can click on that free download of how to conduct a good interview and um You'll be in the email list and we'll send you updates when the course um, for how to have a long-standing radio program gets launched. We're really excited about that. Likewise, Corner Cafe is listener supported. So we've been around for a while, about 15 years. Um, Jamie came on as my co-host about five years ago, and now we're listener supported. And so what that means is... Of course, you can get a tax deductible donation, but also that we can expand the show. Um, we have invited other personalities like Biff Gore and Ray Richella, who's an artist, um, to come and be personalities. But we have a vision also to do concerts and to expand our reach with this thing called media. So if you could just pray and ask the Lord um, if If he puts it on your heart to give to Corner Cafe, that would be great. And you can go to Corner Cafe Entertainment and click on the listener supported tab and um, give there. And of course, even as much as what it it would cost for a cup of coffee helps. So anything that the Lord puts on your heart to support the the show is um, fantastic. So thank you for that. Well, we have... A new guest here. We have never interviewed him before. Um, His name is Kel Bailey. He's a new artist to the Corner Cafe. Can't wait to get to know him. So he'll come up after the break. So stay tuned. Hi, guys. What can we get for you? I have Natalie's drink. You get Ernie's, okay? Okay. Natalie's going to get a large black coffee, please. Uh, it looks like uh, Ernie has already just texted me his uh, his drink. He wants a latte, two and a half Splendors, one percent milk, 183 degrees precisely, extra foam but not a cappuccino, a one pump sugar free pumpkin, uh, spice syrup. Stir one time to the left while the sun is shining, and shaken, not stirred. We'll work on that. Great coffee, but oh, I'd like a little creamer in this, okay? Uh, oh, that's okay. Hold on, Ernie, you know I'm a big fan. Hold on one well, second. Thank you, thank you. It'll be great. We'll oh, hey, there you go. How about some anything else? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, everything looks great. Sure. Everything looks great. You know, just kind of. There you go. Oh, thank you very much. You know what? Um, oh, everything okay? You got everything? Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, you okay. know what? Oh, oh, what? I'm coming down with a cold. Oh, so cold? Oh. I got something for that. Yeah. Oh, I've got something for that. There you go. Oh, that'll help. Huh? <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'm feeling something? a little chill. Chill? Oh, I got you, buddy. Thank you. Oh, okay. thanks, man. Yeah, you know, You're welcome, come on this desk. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Your phone, give me everything wonderful. there. Jamie, I used to floor direct. Do you want to give floor directing a shot? Ooh, yes. Okay. I can do that. All right. Great. I'll be right back. All right. See ya. And uh, the West Pier is at a next week's What? What? This camera? Hey. I have no idea what he wants this video. Where's Rachel when you need her? I don't... And welcome back to the Corner Cafe, and we have a new guest on the show. We have Kel Bailey joining us. Thanks for joining us at the Corner Cafe. Absolutely. So glad to be here. Thank you for interviewing me today. Yeah, well, it's always great to be connected to the body of Christ. We love what you're doing. You just put out a new album called Evidence, which we're going we're gonna to feature two of those songs. But just give us a little okay. history of um, your musical career. Absolutely. So, of course, um, I'm like a typical church kid. Grew up in church. Um, my parents had me at church at a young age. Um, fast forward at like around the age of six or seven, I started having an interest for like drums. I was super um, intrigued by the drums, always looking at the drummer, figuring out what he was doing. Um, after I figured out that I probably wasn't go, going to go in the path of being a drummer, um, I decided to start pursuing after the keyboard. Um, I figured out fastly that I could play, play by ear, um, and my parents bought me a keyboard shortly after that, and I started making music from there and just practicing and getting better and better and through the years and more opportunities started to open up for me. And from there, fast forward, um, I feel that the Lord spoke to me that he wanted me to release the music that he had been giving me and the music that I had been writing for the past couple of years. So I started the journey of releasing music, producing it, arranging it, and bringing together different musicians and creatives to actually play on the records. Um, and I started releasing it to the world. And we're at my second sophomore album now, um, that I just released called Evidence, and the streams and the support has been really, really good with it so far, so I'm excited about that. Yeah, we were uh, checking out your social media. It definitely is great that it's getting a lot of hype, and, um, you know, I, yeah. love the, I love the title Evidence. Why did you title the album Evidence? Yes, that's a great question. Um, so there were three names that I was thinking about. One of the names was My Testimony, um, and I forgot what the other name. Oh, the other name was going to be Faithful God, which um, is the single from the album. And the other name was Evidence, of course. I sent it out to um, my close friends, my group message, and I was like, hey, what name sticks out? What, what sounds like a catchy album name? Um, they was like Evidence, like four or five of my homies. They was like Evidence. So I reached out to my wife, which she always has great input <laughs> in terms of my musical <laughs> like ideas and stuff like that um and she was like evidence she was like faithful god sounds a little too straightforward she was like you want to come up with the album name that makes people wonder what is this about so i was like that sealed it that's enough for me <laughs> so from there evidence came about and the story behind it i thought about the 10 songs that i had and i was like what does this represent to me so we have songs like Faithful God, we have songs like God Will Fight My Battles, there's another song called I Am Safe. When I thought about all of those song titles, it just showed me that God is who He says that He is. Mm -hmm. So when you listen to the lyrics, Faithful God is um, beyond what I can see. I know one thing for sure, that God is faithful. Really this album is about declaring the goodness of who God is and sharing the message of who Jesus Christ is. And with this album, I hope that it presents evidence of who God is through lyrics and through music. Yeah. Well, yeah, and just a testimony, and that's the really good thing about being a songwriter and an artist, is that we get to share the testimony, mm -hmm. right? And even through the lyrics. Um, but let's take a yeah. listen to um, Faithful God, and we'll come back and get to know you more. Here it is. Okay, perfect. You already have some fun. Are you ready to have some fun on tonight? Whoa, whoa. Everybody clap, let's go.
mystery and the beauty of God's faithfulness is that even when we're unfaithful to him, he still remains faithful to us. If you can just pause a moment and reflect, look back and think of all the things that God has done for you, the ways that he's made, the doors that he's opened for you, even when you didn't deserve it, he's still the God that consistently comes through for you. All I have needed, thy hands have provided, great is thy faithfulness. Listen. You are faithful and your mercy endure it. You are faithful and your mercy endure it. You are faithful and your mercy endure it forever and ever. faithful god on corner cafe and we have kel bailey on the show you are pretty gifted my my friend um you do producing and bringing other artists on do you that did you say you also produce other artists yes so i do every now and then um other artists up and coming artists will reach out to me and say hey i have this song i want you to produce it i want you to be a part of it so that's another one of my passions not only like building up the songs that God gives me, but helping other artists build their vision out as well. Um, so I do do that. Yeah, that's really cool. I love that. Um, it's just, it's good to see, even in the body of the Christ, you know, I believe he divinely connects us, you know, even guests for the show, and I'm sure mm-hmm. you you believe that as well. Um, how have you met yeah. these other artists? Because we, Jamie and I, he's not here um, tonight, but we often talk about an amazement and a, a great evidence for the Lord is just how he divinely orchestrates our life to meet other people, to do this other thing. Yes, that's, that's so true. That's so good. Um, so of course, one of the things that I'm super passionate about is, uh, growing with the people that is around me. So some of these people that are featured artists, they're actually really, really good friends of mine. Um, and others are artists that I've connected with on social media through the years. Um, people like Chris Bender, um, I came across his music. Um, he has a single out called um, Glad In It, which is an amazing song. Um, I heard his voice and I was like, hey, he can really, really sing. I would love to connect with him and work with him one day. So the power of social media now, um, we're able to reach out through DMs and right. let people, you know, see if they want to be a part of what I'm doing. So a lot of the Half of the artists is like I have a relationship with them. The other half is kind of I've built a relationship through show, social media, and we've connected that way. Yeah. So the power of social media is real, and it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it it can be used for bad, but, you know, obviously things can be used for good, too, and to further the kingdom, which is what you are doing. I love your shirt. Is that, um, Thank did you. you make that, or where'd you get that shirt? I didn't. I have a good friend. Um, I want to say he's in Michigan, but this is his brand. This is his company. It's called um, Teak Jesus. So it's a brand that uh, says exactly what it is, <laughs> Teak Jesus. I love it. I love that. Um, what, what's his website, just in case some of our, our viewers and even listeners um, want to get it? Look it up real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I put you on the spot right there. <laughs> no, you're good. So, um... Kel, with um, everything you're doing and connecting and helping other artists, what do you feel within your specific artistry and in, in your songwriting and who you are? What's the message that you feel the Lord really has for you to bring? 
I really think, so there's a array of songs that I feel like God blesses me to write. Um, a lot of these songs come from like personal prayers and just personal thoughts that I have about God and who He is. Uh, what, I've, what I've seen is, especially with this album, the things that God gives me, other people are able to connect with it because it's from God. Um, so I have a song on the album called Close, and it just talks about wanting to be close with God and in the arms of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, and people are reaching out to me saying, hey, this song is really touching my heart. This song is really doing something to me. Um, and I just really think that God wants to, it's like preachers almost, it's like a pastor stands up each week and there's a different message, but it's, uh, it, it, it's a common theme each week. You're, you're speaking about Jesus, you're speaking about God. So I believe that God gives me different song titles and different um, themes around the song, but it has the same theme of, you know, God is who he is, you know? Right. Amen. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And we're going to actually take a listen to Close pretty soon here. Um, with, you know, all the challenges in the world right now that we just live in a really interesting time, you know, Jamie and I believe that, you know, we're in the end times, if you will. Um, what particular thing do you feel that the Lord is having you to speak on? Because it's just a very interesting time. We have technology where we can hear um, news around the world. We have wars. And did, you know, Jesus said in the end times, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars, you know. Um, so how do you feel about just where we are now as a believer in these times? Mm -hmm. I think it's time for us as believers to be bold in our faith. Amen. Um, I feel like right now there is a lot of distractions. There's a lot of things that is trying to get our attention. We have social media. We have the stresses of life. Um, I think God is calling us to be bold in this moment and to really trust in Him um, through seeking Him through prayer, seeking Him in our Word, and not just getting caught up in social media. Right. Um, I know that's a one that I keep on saying, but I feel like social media <laughs> is so powerful, but it can be a stronghold as well. Yeah. Like sometimes we, first thing we do when we wake up sometime in the morning is pick up our phone and go yes. to Instagram. <laughs> and I feel like if we can kind of shift our focus, focus on God and focus on the kingdom and becoming bold and speaking out on things that are wrong, God will get the glory in that. Right. Um, and also outside of that part, I think God is wanting people within the earth to really give their gifts back to Him and put it out in the earth. Um, I think God gives a lot of us creatives amazing ideas, but fear allows, fear causes creatives to be held back from doing what God told them to do. Right. Like, God has got to give them a song, and we'll hold on to that song because we'll say it's not perfect, and I don't have the resources I need to release this song into the world. But God has called us to be bold mm -hmm. and to release the gift that he's given us. Amen. Completely agree. Well, let's take a listen to Close. We'll be right back. Come closer to you, draw me close, closer to your presence, draw me close, I want to dwell in your arms, draw me close, closer to your presence, draw
desire to be closer to Jesus right there. Can we send the worship in this place? Oh, Jesus. And I lay inside every weight and everything is not like you. And I come before you humbly. I draw near to your And that was Close on Corner Cafe, and I have the pleasure of talking with Kel Bailey. He's new to the Corner Cafe. We love making new friends here, so we know that um, after you come on the Corner Cafe, you just got to know your family from now on. Absolutely. I'm here for that. <laughs> yeah. And that's what's special about being in the body of Christ, too, is, you know, we could just meet people, strangers, even in an airport. And we know I've met people. I'm like, I know you're a Christian. They're like, I knew you were a Christian. Um, right. So, yeah, it's just the Holy Spirit in us. And, um, you know, what a joy to be able to bring his message out there. And especially, you know, I'm an artist myself. And the show is Jamie, Jamie Daniel, our co-host. Um, he He and I talk about often how just the gifting of being able to write music and being an artist, you know, it's, it's a, it's a true joy, but with that, there's some levity to that. And there's some weight to that, that we're even, um, as artists and as Christians that we're carrying the gospel message, um, with honor and that knowing that people are looking at us. So as Christians, how do you talk to your, your, your wife or your friends about, you know, being not only uh, a professor of Christ, but we're walking this out, for real, and we're we're definitely putting a good face towards um, the Lord in our in our Christian walk. Yeah, I think it's important to be honest with where we're at. Um, I Amen. think it's okay <laughs> to be like, "Hey, I'm going through a season where I'm feeling that my faith is low," mm-hmm. um, or even me releasing this album, I knew that God had gave it to me, um, but there was a part of me that was feeling like. God has given me this music, He's given me this gift, but am I really walking with God the way that I'm supposed to be? Right. Not that I've, you know, turned my back and I'm just, you know, looking back and trying to do my own thing, but I think it's important to take personal inventory sometimes and say, where am I at? Like, am I doing all that I can do to seek after God? Um, and am I really living the life that I'm singing about and the life that I'm writing about. Right. It's one thing just to be used by God. Um, God can literally use anyone, but it's another thing to actually live out what you say that you're singing about and you're writing about. Right. So that's one of the things that I think is important, just being honest about where you're at and being around community that can actually encourage you and um, lift you up when you are down or lift you up when you are going through a trial or temptation a season where you are feeling just low, like community is super important. Right. Amen to that. Yeah, for sure. And that's what we try to build here at the Corner Cafe is community of artists, because oftentimes, and even pastors, you know, I I just feel their pain if you're in the public eye, if you will, within Christendom, um, and a lot of pressure could be put on you to be perfect, if you will, but none of us are perfect. We're all saved by grace, right? Right. And so we do have to be honest, but then being in the public spotlight, if you will, even as a pastor, as a Christian artist, um, we need that community. Mm-hmm. And like you said, you hit on a really good point, just being honest. You know, let's get back to just being real and honest. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, where do you see yourself in about, I don't know, three years in your artistry? Where Where do you believe that the Lord's taking you? 
Yeah, um, it's something that I think about a lot as a creative. Um, I really was just thinking about this yesterday. Um, I think one of the things of being a creative as I am, I'm always thinking ahead, always trying to figure out what's next. But some of the challenges of that, I feel like sometimes I can think too fast and get ahead of what God has revealed to me. I can relate. So, like I'm already, I'm, I'm already yeah. trying to figure out like, I'm do another album or if I do another album is it going to be live or is it going to be a studio record yeah um and I think I know what I want to do in my heart I kind of want to do a live record after you know evidence um but I don't know if God's going to allow me to do that so for me it's more so uh being patient listening to the spirit daily and just waiting on God like I know that that is technically the right answer but at the same time, that's truly how I feel. Um, one of the things I often say, as long as God allows me to release music, I will do that. When my time is up to release music and God calls me to do the next thing, I will do that as well. But it's literally whatever God wants me to do next, like whether that's a live recording or whether that's something else, like I'm, I'm here for it, you know? Amen. Yeah. And I've stepped ahead a couple of times in my life, more than I like to say. And it's just, yeah, to take the time to really seek his voice and to um, get the green light is important, you know, and especially as creatives. I mean, we have ideas all the time. We're kind of ADD, I think, you know, it's like we kind of finish this project and we're on to the next. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. Yeah. Well, let's um, transition to our espresso question, which is express yourself. And so, Kel, um... I think this is a good question for you because I'm, I'm really curious. Where is your favorite coffee shop? Where is your favorite coffee shop? <laughs> I'm laughing. You're, you're going to laugh at me. I actually don't drink coffee. Oh, you don't. Oh. I don't. Well, but I don't I either. Say, I will say. I will say uh, if I did, I mean, I think it would be, be Starbucks. I don't drink coffee, but I do like every now and then go get like a decaffeinated like tea or something like that. Yeah. Because I don't really do well with caffeine, you know, but you know. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I I too, and I'm host of Corner Cafe. I don't drink coffee either, but I love coffee shops. <laughs> and so, and I always order exactly. tea too. So what's your favorite tea? Favorite tea, um, Starbucks has this, um, this refresher type situation. Um, it's really, really good. I can't think of exactly what it's called because I don't go there often, but it's really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they have some good options there. Um, I really like the chai tea, but probably not a Starbucks chai tea. They put a lot of sugar in it, but there is a, a coffee shop right. here that doesn't put a lot of sugar in. It's a really good chai tea. So, But if you if you struggle with caffeine, chai has a lot of caffeine, so definitely stay away from that. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, <laughs> no worries. I will do that. <laughs> Well, um, just curious, you know, where'd you meet your wife? She sounds like a great lady and uh, someone who has a lot of wisdom and who supports your music. Where did you guys meet? So we actually met at the YMCA. Um, amazing love story, right? <laughs> um, I had walked in and um, she was she worked with the kids in the child watch area. I walked in, I saw her to the left. She didn't see me, but I saw her. Um, went in the gym to play basketball. Um, I come out. And I see her at the door, and she's walking in. She's smiling at me, so we both make eye contact. As you can tell, I'm a pretty smiley person, so we both, like, smile at each other. (laughs) Fast forward, joking with my friends, I'm like, who is that? Who is that? I just keep on saying, who is that? Like, I'm going to go talk to her. Who is that? But long story short, um, one of my close friends, she went up to her and was like, hey, this is my cousin. Um, (laughs) Here's his number. He's a musician. He makes music. He goes to church take his number down, talk to him, basically. (laughs) Long story short, we connected from there, and we became really, really good friends first, and we just really built on a great friendship, Mm, and now we're married. We've been married now for going on three years. Yeah. Oh, well, congratulations. Yes, and a great friendship is definitely the foundation for any great relationship. Yeah. Um, Just curious, because you know that song, the YMCA gets played a lot at weddings. Did you guys play that at your wedding? (laughs) <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. I was like, yeah, YMCA, we got, you know, but maybe your anniversary, you guys could just 
play that song. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to celebrate that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you see, you know, community is important, and uh, it looks like you're really involved in your church, too. Um, what's your church like? Do you play on the worship team and, and stuff like that as well? Yeah, so I'm a part of Speaking Spirit Ministries in Richmond, Virginia. Um, our slogan is Home of the Hope Giver, um, where the pastor is Pastor Fred Wyatt and Inger Wyatt. Um, and I'm a part of the music ministry there. I'm the lead keyboard player, um, really just overseeing like the band portion of things, making sure the arrangements and stuff is solid each week. Um, but it's a great church and great community. Uh, one of the things I appreciate about Speaking Spirit, they do everything at a high level. Everything is excellent. Um, they really care about the, the sanctuary and the equipment and all of that good stuff. Um, and that's something that I can relate to. I think oftentimes in church, um, we can treat church as just like, oh, it's church, and who cares if the bathrooms are dirty, or who cares if we don't have the best kitchen or right. the best sanctuary. But, I mean, those things aren't the most important thing, but it's nice to be a part of a ministry that, you know, puts excellence on sound equipment, microphones, right. sanctuary, and all of that good stuff. It just shows that you really value who God is. Right. Um, and yeah, so. I like that. And I'm sure you even apply that to your music, of course, you as an artist and when you help other artists. And if, you know, knowing that I already know you do, how do you do that? How, how do I help other artists? Yeah, just present excellence. Like, is there there's some tips you could even give us, like, as an artist, how do you put forward excellence? And as a producer, how do you put forth excellence in what you do? One one thing that comes back to mind from me um, in terms of how I uh, bring forth excellence, I think one goes back to honesty. Sometimes I think it's important um, if if I can execute a vision and I think that I believe in a vision and all of that, I will communicate that to the artist. But I think it's important when I am not able to execute the vision or I don't necessarily see the vision or let's say that an artist comes with me with a song and I can't quite hear it how they hear it, um, it's important for me to just be honest and be like, hey, I may not be a person for the job, but I have someone who can do better than me. Uh, and sometimes every now and then I'm definitely willing to help out artists by just giving them a, a discount and mm -hmm. saying, hey, I believe in what you do. Uh, I'm not going to charge you full price. I'm going to sow into your life and, you know, do you a favor, so to speak. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, because, um, you know, we all need help. And, and just the encouragement, really, of um, having somebody believe in what we do is huge. Did you have somebody in your life that spoken to you as a young boy? Um, I know that you wanted to be a football player, and then you learned, wow, I really mm -hmm. have this gifting for music. But who in your life came alongside you to really encourage you in your God-given gifts? Mm -hmm. I would say, what, my mom's going to love that I say this. I feel <laughs> like one of my biggest supporters is my mom. Love it. Um, like, she always just pushed me. Like, both my parents, they've been super, super supportive with my gifts. Um, and they always just push me to be better. Um, but outside of them, I'm the type of person that I'm inspired a lot by the people that I see. So I just remember being younger, being inspired by musicians older than me who had been in their careers and craft for a long time. Like people that come to mind is like Daryl Woodson, um, mm -hmm. another guy named Brandon Wilkes, um, another guy so many people I've encountered along my journey that has inspired me to be where I am today. Um, someone that inspired me as a songwriter and as a producer um, was James Johnson. He's my brother. Mm. Um, he started uh, producing music. Um, well, when I was 13, I went to a listening party, and he was the producer of the record. Um, and that, that moment, I was like, I want to produce records. I want to be a part of that scene of releasing music into the earth. So yeah. he's a person that has really inspired me and opened up my mind. Yeah, that's great. And then just talking to you, too, and before I even met you, you know, you're a strong Christian. You're solid. Um, certainly your mom helped in that. But do you have anybody in the faith that has been a mentor, someone you've really looked up to? Mm -hmm. I glean a lot from people from afar. Um, 
blank right now. Again, I'm, I'm inspired by so many people. I don't have someone that just definitely comes to mind at this moment. Yeah, yeah. And I'm putting you on the spot a lot here, so my apologies. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. Um, but yeah, I, I like watching a lot of YouTube stuff, and I have a lot of favorite pastors I listen to, and of course, connecting to the local body of Christ, too, here in the church I go to. Um, how did you, um, as a young kid, or maybe I'll ask it in this way instead, how did you come to know the Lord? We all have, you know, that moment where the light bulb goes off and we're like, okay, yes, I, I want to receive you. Can you just explain that? Because I believe there's somebody's, somebody who's listening who doesn't know the Lord and the Lord has been tugging on their heart. Maybe through hearing your story, they can say, yes, that's me. I want to receive Jesus right now. I mean, anytime we can receive him. Absolutely. Um young at a young age having the fear of the lord um and i didn't know it at the time but i know what it felt like to be in church and to feel that feeling of i guess the presence of god but not knowing what to do with it because you don't understand it right um but at i was baptized and at the age of 16 i want to say i was filled with the holy spirit with the evidence of tongues Mm -hmm. um but for me, I feel like at a young age, God had marked me and sort of set me apart. Um, and there was just a tugging on my heart. So what I often communicate to people in general is not by mistake when you feel the presence of God and feel the tug of God on your heart. Um, like that's God saying, I'm calling you. That's God saying right. that once, like you're mine. I've chosen you. So it's like when you feel the presence of God and if you feel even a slight tug on your heart, and you like those things don't come from your from your flesh. Those things can only come by the spirit of God. Um, and I think it's the spirit of God that brings us wisdom to understand who we are and who God has called us to be. So my testimony is simple simple that God God called me and I accepted his salvation and accepted the grace that God provided. Um, and since about the age of I would say probably 15, 16, I've been living for Christ and trying to figure out this journey. Um, I make mistakes every day, and I'm still trying to figure it out, and I don't have it all figured out, but it's by God's grace and mercy that I continue on this journey and figure it out along the way. Right. Amen to all that, because, yeah, we'll, we'll never have it all figured out. I mean, and thank you for your humble response to that. Um, he helps us daily. We need Him daily. And that's the thing. When we come to know Christ, we realize... I can't of myself do anything. I need you. It's only by your sacrifice that I'm accepted into the family. He came down for us. He did it all. He completed it. Now we rest in him. Mm -hmm. And we have the pleasure of doing whatever he calls us to do on this earth. And so for you and I, um, it's being an artist. You know, you're a musician. He gifted you with that. And what a amazing thing that the Lord gifts us all so uniquely, which I love. And that's what we love about the Corner Cafe is having such unique individuals as yourself. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot again, Kel, but I'm just going to ask you to lead anybody who's listening or watching by video right now into salvation. Just a simple prayer um, that we can pray with someone right now. The Lord's tugging your heart. Would you do that? Sure. God, we are grateful for another day. We are grateful for your grace. We are grateful for the mercy that you give to us each and every day. Mm -hmm. God, I pray if there is anyone that is listening that you have been pulling on their heart and seeking after them to choose them into the family of God and into the kingdom of God, I pray, Lord, that you would allow them to receive salvation right now. Mm -hmm. God, your word tells us in Romans that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, then you will be saved. So, God, I pray that you would bring salvation right now. And I pray, God, that whoever that individual is, that you would lead them to the right ministry to be Mm -hmm. a part of and be built up in the kingdom of God and to understand what salvation is. Right. God, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And it is so simple. And thank you, Kel, for that very simple, beautiful prayer. Um, so welcome to the family. Those of you who are listening um, and watching by video and pray that prayer. It's super simple. And yes, we, we agree. Um, find a good church um, and the Lord will lead Absolutely. you to a Bible-based church for sure. Absolutely. Now, Kel, how can people... Um, get a hold of you your music and just maybe someone who's listening who's like you know i'd love to have him as a producer 
Absolutely. So um, my website is www.mkbaileymusic.com. Um, and on Instagram, it's probably the social media that I'm most active on. It's going to be mkbailey underscore. Um, and it'll show up as Kel Bailey. Um, and Facebook, I'm on Kel Bailey as well, K-E-L-L Bailey. Great, yeah, and we also have those links um, on our website. You just click on his his photo there on our website, Corner Cafe Entertainment, and you can follow all those links as well. Thank you so much for being on the Corner Cafe. It's been great to get to know you and hear about your faith and your music. Absolutely, so glad to be here. I'm a part of you guys. Too. Yeah, you're the family. So yeah, you have to meet uh, Jamie in the future. You guys would really um, hit it off. Uh, can you give us, someone who's listening, you know, there's a lot of challenges. I was just talking to a friend. See, I was at a tea shop, because <laughs> like you, I don't like coffee. Uh, <laughs> so yep. I go to this uh-huh. tea shop a lot here. Um, it's yeah. like my, some of my clients say it's my office, and they know my name there, and oh, wow. they know what I order, <laughs> you know, but yeah. <laughs> I was talking to a friend, and she's like, man, so many people are going through so many things right now. It, it's hard to even know, of course, encouraging people uh in Christ and directing people towards the word. Absolutely. Um, but just someone who's listening right now, who's going through a hard time, we've all been there, but Kale, with your own experience, is there a way in which you can, or you feel led, I should say, to encourage somebody right now? Absolutely. Um, I think another thing that I guess this has been a theme with everything, honesty, um, and community, I think it's important to share with someone your challenges and your struggles, someone that you trust. That's just not anyone, though, someone that you actually trust. Right. Um, and being vulnerable and being honest about how you feel. Um, and then another thing, you know, if you don't necessarily have someone, um, I'm a type of person, I haven't found a great therapist yet. I haven't honestly been looking a lot, but I think therapy is great. Amen. Um, yep. It's something that is becoming more of the forefront in, um, just in all communities right now, people right. are talking more about therapy, and therapy is becoming cool to do, which is great. And I'll leave you with this analogy right here, which I love. Um, we talk about when, you know, we have an issue in our body, we go to a doctor, but when someone is struggling in their mind, mm. we just, you know, ignore that. But yeah. that's what therapy is for. It's there to give you the tools and the perspective that sometimes um, we can't figure out on our own. Right. Um, and the times that I have done therapy, it's not that it necessarily fixed a problem or solved the problem, but it gave me the tools to understand the situation that I was going through and understand the perspective. And ultimately, that led me back to God because mm-hmm. it made me feel more equipped because it was like, I have the tools now. Right. Um, and yeah, so therapy is super, super great. Don't feel weird about saying, hey, I want to go seek therapy or... I want to find a therapist is great. Yeah, I think any time in life uh, to go to therapy, everyone should at least once, you know, and I have as well. Exactly. Yeah, just because there's so much to this life. And, you know, and nowadays, um, Christians who are therapists, and I would strongly advise to seek out a Christian therapist, you know, um, there's a lot of them. And someone who has a biblical worldview and who could... uh, point you towards more in your faith you know because yeah absolutely the holy spirit's the ultimate counselor but see he he created us like you said he created us for community and then going back to another thing that you said is being honest so that's what you do when you go to therapy Mm -hmm. is you're challenged and you're just honest with somebody yep yeah that's true (laughs) yes that's so good so that's the theme of our show honesty and community love it yes yes well kel it's been a pleasure we're going to keep in touch with you and please let us know when you release new music or any new projects or any artists really that um, you produce who would be a good fit for the corner cafe absolutely i will definitely do that i've enjoyed being a part of this interview so everything's been great i love it it's been a pleasure well um we're going to go to a break we will be back stay tuned It's so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take Him at His word Just to rest upon His promise Just to know, thus saith the Lord 
Hey, Corner Cafe friends and family. My name is Biff Gore, the Ambassador of Soul, and I am so excited to share with you Biff Unplugged. Now, I just wanted to just say one thing to maybe be an encouragement to you. Um, in Mark chapter 9, verse 24, uh, the man says, I believe, help my unbelief. And if you live on this earth long enough, you will experience times that are not so pleasant, that will cause us to stumble as we walk with the master. So much so, our cry may say, I believe, help my unbelief. And if we have a relationship with the Lord, that means that we have surrendered all, we have tasted and seen that he is good, but there are times when we become discouraged. And sometimes it's from unanswered prayer or a prolonged illness or suffering or the temptation to just simply go back to Egypt. Uh, and you know, that's very real. But praise God that even though doubt comes, nothing can diminish his love for us. Our doubts affect experience, but not reality. If we are truly in Christ, our fluctuating experience is no match for the evidence he has provided for us. And all we have to do is look to the cross. I love what Romans 5, 8 says. It says that God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. There he crucified every good reason to distrust him. There from sin and self we cease. There from Jesus we simply take joy in life and rest and peace. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Peace and blessings. Let's walk in you. And welcome back to the Corner Cafe. Just a lovely time with Kel Bailey. Such an amazing heart gifted guy and if you want to check him out you can go to our website corner cafe entertainment click on um kel bailey the little article there on the home page and you can get um, connected to all his social media links also if you gave your life to christ when he prayed um, you can also go on our website and just learn about the gift of salvation we have scriptures that talk about the gifts of salvation if you want to reach out to us um, we can also help to connect you to a great church because that's the first thing after you receive the lord is just getting um, set up in a good bible-based church so reach out to us feel free we'll help you get connected to a great church and that's corner cafe entertainment Dot com. Also, if you know an artist, maybe you have a great worship leader. I mean, there's so many amazing, gifted people in the local churches. If you want to suggest somebody for the show, go to cornercafeentertainment.com and let us know about that new emerging artist. And uh, we'd love to have them on the show. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Corner Cafe. And remember, the best influence you can have is the impact for Jesus Christ. See you at the cafe next week.